Mitch, and welcome back to the Inspiring Retail Stage at Autumn Fair 2021. Whether you're joining us in, in, us in person or virtually, it's nice to have you back. If you're unable to make any session in person, please make sure you download the Autumn Fair app to watch any session live and on demand. Also, don't forget to your qu get your questions in uh, via the Ask the Speaker function on the app. Right, next up is interior designer and TV presenter Paul Moneypenny, who will be talking design, inspiration, trends, fads, and much more, joined by the lovely Suzanne Ellingham. So please put your hands together for Paul and Suzanne, please. Thank you, Kesh. Um, yeah, so my name's Suzanne Ellingham, I'm the head of content for Spring and Autumn Fair. I am delighted to be chatting to Paul today. Um, Many of you will already know Paul from Design Masters, but I think we can say he is interior designer, he wears many hats, he's an influencer, does some TV work, he's also a retailer, um, and as we can see, he's a man who loves a bit of colour as well, so very subtle. <laughs> don't we all, very subtle little number you've got for today, um, which will look great on camera if you're good. <laughs> Um, so we're just g literally going to have a chat because I think you've got so much to share and I think often when we talk to somebody who's been on a TV show, we often forget actually there are lots of other things that you do and I'm actually really delighted that you're an active retailer as well. So there's lots and lots for us to share. Um, but Paul, we're going to start with the obvious question. So BBC Design Masters, um, obviously that had a huge impact. And I think with all of us being stuck in watching box sets, got discovered again recently. Um, how was that experience for you? It was strange because the whole country was in a full lockdown and I was flying back and forth every week and creating these schemes in five days and um, trying to create these beautiful spaces and being put in front of a camera for the very first time. So all my family were all locked indoors and I was back and forth making trips safely, of course. But um, <laughs> it was a very, very... Uh, it's, it was very different to what I do day to day. I run a wallpaper store. Uh, it's the biggest sto independent stockist of wallpaper, I think, in Europe. So it was very, very different to be away from the wallpaper and then just slingshot into, the, into all the cameras and the, the TV crew. And how did you find that experience? Because even today, live streaming, it's something I'm not used to being in front of camera, despite appearances. Um, but for somebody who's gone from retailer, and obviously you're confident anyway, but how did you find that being in front of the camera and how have you managed the attention that you've had afterwards? I think it was really, really strange. So uh, from day one, I thought, oh, I just really have to be myself because if I manage to get through more than one episode and I get through the next round, <laughs> I can't keep it up. So I just have to be me. So my way of looking at it was as long as I'm having fun and I'm enjoying it, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make the most of it, whether I last one episode or I get doing all eight. Um, it was just all about the fun that I was going to have. So I think that's what, that's what got me through, just enjoying yeah. it and savouring every moment that I was there. I think the, having the fun with the likes of Alan Carr, so seeing him for the first time in front of you <laughs> when he's giving me a bit of banter and I'm giving him it twice as hard back, that helped quite a bit. <laughs> it just broke down the tension. So the judging was very, very serious, but he came in at the right moments with lighthearted humor just to, to break that. Yeah, because I think when you're put into that, and I'm going to call it a pressure pot, yeah. I think going into that way, you're completely out of your comfort zone, and all of a sudden you've got to design these, ske these scenes and these rooms with very little notice all at once. Um, I can imagine that lighthearted banter became part of the show. Yeah, it definitely was. And it wasn't realistic interior design. You know, we got a client brief. You didn't get to meet this client. You got a really tight budget of maybe like a thousand pound or fifteen hundred pound, and then I'm looking at fabrics at seventy pound a meter, thinking that's not going to work. And then you were given maybe five days to source it and design it, bearing in mind that the country was in full lockdown and there was no s stores or shops open. So you were just praying that the deliveries were going to come yeah. online. And it, I was just doing everything via computer screen and just trying to make the best of what I had available to yeah. me. So yeah. It and was I feel like you've probably been in the same spot as a retailer as well, going from that phase of having things, lots of things available, being able to go and touch and feel, and, and now all of a sudden everything's online. So I think you've got it both barrels. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, and we're gonna, not gonna dwell too much on the show, but um, what was your most unexpected moment on the show? Um, I think the most unexpected I was probably every week was because when I started on the show, I just, I didn't believe that I should have been there. I, I had a lot of self-doubt and thought, why am I here? Is this a fluke? 
And I think just getting past every week and then realizing maybe on episode four or five, no, I do deserve to be here. And actually, I do have a talent that they maybe want to see. So yeah. I think that was the highlight of it. And then the downside was probably I had the design to be shut. <laughs> and my hair and the rain isn't a good mix. So there was a storm and my cabinet blew over and the glass broke and it was just, it was just horrendous. So that wasn't my my favourite week, but it turned out beautiful. That was the main thing. Well, I love the way you started it with the rain and the hair. I think yeah. I'd have had the same concern. But it's interesting, actually, that you that you suffer with imposter syndrome. Like, I would never have thought that about you. Yeah, I think I'm my own, like, you know, worst enemy. I think one of the clips they used for their advertisements uh, on the ad breaks, and every week I had to watch it week in, week out, every night, and it was me basically sobbing to the camera and saying, the only thing holding me back was myself. And it really was. Yeah. Everybody else could see something I really couldn't. I just thought, oh, I've fluked another week. Let's yeah. see how far I can get. No, you put together, I think any of us that have watched the series, absolutely, your designs are memorable. And when you think about good design, it's the emotional reaction to it and it's how you feel about it. Yeah. So I think, I think you touched a lot of people and hopefully if you gave even one person a bit of confidence to experiment with a bit of colour, I think yeah. that's something to be proud of. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Well, I wasn't, that was the thing. I, I, I wanted to try and nail those briefs. I wanted to get the client brief exact, but I was trying to slip a little bit of my, you know, my influence and my personality in slightly, but <laughs> not overwhelm them too much, which, you know, yeah. was hard for me at times to rein it back. <laughs> Well, I think um, we've obviously chatted about this before we came on stage, but you do love a bit of colour and pattern, and I love a bit of colour and pattern as well, absolutely. Um, where did that come from? Because it takes a lot of confidence to work with colour. Yeah, it's, it's the opposite to me. So I, I, get, I get very nervous whenever I have to start going very neutral and natural and, and playing it down, as you can probably tell. But um, I think it started whenever I was really, really young. My, I have two twin brothers and they do not, they're not into art or design or interiors at all. We're complete opposites. Um, and I think it was always, we always had the most neutral or blue bedrooms. And every time it got decorated, it was another shade of blue or it was white or gray. And I remember one of the, the first trips I got to go and pick my own bedroom and it was, where I actually work now, only I was wheeled in and <laughs> I was with my mom and dad. And I remember picking the boldest stripe that I could find. It was purple, orange, and green. What a combo. And um, <laughs> I wanted it the whole way around the room and I got it. And um, I was always like really interested when I went into like, big stores, department stores as a child and see what way they would make the beds up with like 50 cushions and extra duvet. So it was always something from a really young age that I had a bit of an interest in. Yeah. And I think, um, I suspect you have no blue, blue bedrooms at home now. I've, uh, no, uh, <laughs> I'll do blue, but it'll have to be extremely dark or extremely bright, but not, you know, what I had, you know, whenever I was very young. <laughs> no, that makes sense. And I think um, a lot of what we're seeing from you in your design work is around that colour. And, and again, we were talking about that confidence. But I think we've gone through a lot of period of beige and grey, and they're great. But what we've seen kind of over the last 12 to 18 months is people becoming more confident in experimenting with their houses um, and really wanting that space to reflect them. And I think from a colour perspective, it really is about how that makes people feel. So in terms of how you feel about that, how do you work to give your customers or your clients that confidence to kind of go the full way? Yeah, I, th I think it's just about, it's, it's how it's merchandise as well. Merchandising is a, a big thing for me. Um, a lot of my background is like visual. So I think if you can sell that scheme to that person and make it easy for them, mm -hmm. um, like a lot of my design, what I've tried to do is like a positive negative effect where somebody might really want to apply a lot of color, a lot of pattern, and they might be brave to do that. But to the person that has a lot of beige or a lot of gray, or they're maybe afraid, but they want to like dip their toe into that bolder world of color, yeah. it's by experimenting and just adding pops of color in, whether that's using cushions or throws or items that you can move around the home. You know, they don't need to stay there forever. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think it's just about trying to, I suppose everybody's different. It's just trying to gauge what, how far you can push that person. You know, obviously it's not me <laughs> living there, it's them that has to live there, but I'll always push onto the side of colour and a bit more pattern <laughs> than normal. Um, and on that, have you found once you've pushed them gently along that direction, they've come back to you and you've been able to go a bit bigger? Yeah, so the, the store that I, that I manage, we have about 20 staff. Um, 
predominantly wallpaper, paint, and this last three, four years, we have branched into like soft furnishings. Um, so we do get a lot of repeat customers, um, and we're such a big, we have a big variety of wallpaper in, st in stock. So the rule is, if we don't have it, you're not, you know, yeah. you're, if you're looking at it, we will have it. Um, but a lot of repeat customers will come back and say, oh, do you remember you told me to paint my room black? Well, it's been great, and I'm not afraid of that anymore. Or, oh, you told me to add color, and I'm really glad I did that. Um, and it's lovely to hear the feedback when people come back, so you've done something right, and gives them a bit more confidence then for the next room to be a bit more experimental and add a bit more color in. Yeah, and just on that, because again, that was something interesting I didn't realize when we were sat down, is you obviously are a retailer. Um, in fact, Paul was here as a buyer about two years ago at Autumn Fair, which um, is probably a very different experience to what he's having now. But how have you found, I mean, we talk and we see a lot in the press around trends of people improving their homes, of there being a big uptick in terms of how retail is recovering. Are you seeing that in your store? Yeah, well, I think what I noticed, lockdown, you know, we all spent so much time at home, more than we wanted to, and people were probably sick of looking at the same four walls, if it was neutral or no matter what it was they had. And I think I found that the, the, the lines that were selling for us were people were being a bit more braver, people were experimenting more, um, they were using more color, they were using more pattern, um, and I think they were just wanting to enjoy their spaces more. They were, they were, they were spending more time there, so they were wanting it to feel really nice. Yeah. Whether they wanted a room to make them feel, feel energy or um, somewhere where they could use as a, a home office where they felt relaxed and you know, slightly more quiet or whether they wanted a, a, to feel like they were having a going out <laughs> experience or a restaurant experience and yeah. it was a bit more lively. So yeah, I definitely did see a, a sway that people were being braver and a lot more pattern was being purchased. And do you think that's continuing now? Yeah, well, definitely for for the retail that, that I'm in, um, yeah. Um, I remember maybe about six years ago, on the, the second floor, there would have just been a sea of neutral and grey and a lot of damask and stripes uh, in wallpaper. And now it's just so refreshing that when you come in, we are able to put it into collections and have different pops of colour, different different types of looks. Yeah. And people really do buy into that. People people like to, to buy a look. So yeah, I do I definitely think I've seen a, a massive change in what people are buying as well. No, that makes and it's I think it's it's nice for us who do love a colour and a pattern to see that uptick and to hear it from a retailer perspective as well, that you're seeing it through the stores. Um, now excitingly, obviously you've branched out, I think it's fair to say. So not only have you done a reality TV design show and also run one of the largest wallpaper stores in Europe, um, you've also launched your own range. What made you, or what, how did that come about? Because obviously you're here today with a new range, but can you talk to me about how that came about and where your inspirations behind that lay? What was your motivation for it? Yeah, well, I've always loved soft furnishings and cushions, and I think what I think where it stemmed from was um, I was always submerged in, all in wallpaper. It was always about wallpaper, and it's what I what I specialize in. Um, I I dip my toe into the world of cushions and throws and soft furnishing just as a to a way of expand in business. Mm -hmm. um, and I visited the the Spring Fair about two years ago, and we stock a lot of the Malini product, um, which is behind everybody. So. I, I'd done a small order um, and it really, really worked. And within a week, I was doing another order and then it got to the point where there was, there was just boxes arriving in every week and there was as much cushions now as what there is wallpaper. Wow. So I seen how much people, you don't need it, but everybody wants lovely cushions and you can really appreciate a really yeah. gorgeous product like that. So um, I seen how well they were doing and I've been selling them now for a few years. and. One of the days I was chatting with Malini and she basically said, well, you love this so much. You, you know your customer, you know the gaps in the market. Would you not consider designing your own around the gaps that you see, you know, the yeah. spaces that you think you could fill? So we had originally spoke about um, designing maybe eight to 10 cushions <laughs> and now I have 70. So, um, and it's split into three collections, which is <laughs> lovely. And it looks like from the collections, you've had a lot of fun with them. Would you say you've had a bit of fun? Yeah, I've had a lot of fun <laughs> because it's been a lot of free reign and if, if I was gonna put my name on a tag, I really wanted it to represent me really well. I wanted it to be, I just didn't wanna s put my name to something that I didn't love and mm -hmm. every single one of them I love and I would have myself. Um, yeah, the, 
the three collections, there, there's a real maximalist over the top celebration of color and pattern collection, which is called uh, What a Frill. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of frills on that. There's a lot of applique, velvet, bright vivid colors. The second collection is Show Home Collection, yeah. which is what we're sitting with now. Um, the inspiration came from on the first episode of Interior Design Masters. I kept a real tight color palette of powder blues and burnt orange. It was a, quite a strange combo. Uh, and it really, really worked. And I got a really good reaction from it. Mm -hmm. So I decided to keep that tight color palette, but do that pattern in a softer, yeah. more muted way. So this is as neutral as I'm probably <laughs> going to go. And then the last collection is Cushion Royale, which is very similar to what I'm wearing now. So it's just lots of bold gold and prints and slightly Art Deco Gatsby yeah. look vibes to it. So. And I think one of the one of the nice things about the collections that you've got, and I think it's a, there's a good range here, is I think people who may have seen you on Design Masters or seen you and some of your um, creations would think it's all out, that it's quite loud, that it's patterned. But I think what you've done by knowing your customers, um, we have the fantastic What a Frill cushion there, but also these are they're bold, they're colourful, but they're mm. really contemporary. And I think what we're seeing is. Um, people who want to experiment with a bit of colour. Like this, I would say that this is your entry level to Paul Money Penny colour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but again, it comes down to what we talk about with trends, and it's the difference between trends and fads. So when we talk about, sometimes when we talk to, when I talk to retailers, which is what I do most of the time, um, it's all about trends, and it almost becomes a dirty word because trends are things that need to be replaced. And actually, they're not. Trends are just things that evolve as people become more confident with them. Um, and I think that I think that movement towards this colour is not something that is going to be a flash in the pan. I think it's going to be something that's going to evolve. Yeah. So it's nice to see um, the more the muted entry level pour, but also how much fun have we have you had with actually pulling it together? And we were having a little chat about pom poms. I've got a few of them on stage because I love the pom-poms. I think they're colourful. But actually, we're seeing them coming through in textile and furniture. And you were saying yeah. um, the reactions to some of the pom-poms that you've put on cushions actually have gone down really well. Yeah, so one of the smaller cushions that I've designed, which is like a, a rectangular shape, but there's just like a double pom-pom on each corner. And it's just, it draws people in and it's, they lift it, it. There's movement, there's a bit of texture, and mm -hmm. people love it. And it is a bit of fun. And you know, I'm not saying you have to buy six of them for your sofa, <laughs> but one will not do any harm, you know? Yeah. And it is about that transition. What we tend to find with uh, consumers and people who are updating things is that they will have their color palette and it may be muted in their homes, but those soft furnishings are the way that people update their homes. And it is more sustainable. A, a great cushion, a great throw, a decorative item. It's just a nice way to update things without having to commit to repaint your walls, redo your curtains, the wallpaper, although you can, obviously you can do the wallpaper as well. Yeah. But how have you, um, in terms of the reaction from today, so Paul launched this collection today at Autumn Fair, um, and it's fair to say you've been quite busy. What's, how have you felt about the reaction? Yeah, uh, I'm probably still in shock at the amount of people that I've spoke to in one day, and I have another couple of days to go. It's, yeah, it's so overwhelming because for the last 12 months, I've just put so much effort, and I feel like I've just lived and breathed all 70 of those designs and I was so particular about each color choice, each trimming, um, the sizes, you know, what was going to sit with what mm. uh, and how I wanted it to look. So um, yeah, it's a bit overwhelming because as I said, the last time I came here, I came here as a buyer and now I'm here launching my product with my name on the label. So <laughs> it, it is, it's overwhelming. No, and I think what we've seen because the Paul is, for people who are watching through live stream, um, Paul's collection is on stage, but it's also on the stand behind us, um, is all of the hard work he did in terms of merchandising it and making it look beautiful has been taken off the shelves quite a few times. Um, but out of all of your cushions, and we were talking about this earlier because you have a few uh, ranges, which ones have surprised you the most? Which ones have people picked up and loved that you think, oh, I wasn't too sure about that? So there's one on the top shelf called Razzmatazz. Um, lots of different colors of velvet, um, like a slightly match m like matchstick um, design, you know, quite geometric uh, with a bit of a pink fringe on it. And it didn't, that was one that I really did like, but I didn't, I thought, mm, people mightn't get this. 
Um, and today, the amount of people that have lifted it and wanted to touch it and stroked it, and they're like, yeah, that's yeah. so tactile, you know. So it's had a really good reaction. I think out of them all, my favorite is the, the one on the second row in the center. It's called uh, Flocking Fabulous. Uh, and there's a flock of birds on it, and there's applique, there's double trimming, there's a lot of color, there's, it's tropical. It's, it's just, it just makes me feel happy yeah. when I look at it. It's everything I love when I see it, so yeah. Yeah, um, I was not going to say that name of that range. You were slightly because, worried about that, Yeah, I was you? slightly worried about that, but I thought Paul can go there. Um, if I get it wrong, it's slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> But I think it's, it just shows how playful design is becoming now um, and how willing people are to play with colour. And I think for, for me, as I walk around the show and I see it, it's, and I see what people are playing with, it is that colour, that fabric, that texture. Um, and that's got to be fun for future product development for you as well. Yeah, so I'm already now looking at what I have and what's had a really good reaction and I've now started to think about the next collection. I never thought I'd say that after the hard work that that has took for the last 12 months, but yeah, I'm already thinking about other things. My head doesn't stop <laughs> at night, so yeah. That's probably the best reaction that you can have at a show, and I think also just seeing people face to face and seeing their reaction has got to be something that's so satisfying after the sleepless nights. Yeah, yeah. Last night, I, um, I, I think I've seen every hour on the clock, um, <laughs> so I'll probably sleep better tonight. I'm absolutely shattered, so yeah, I'm just pleased that people are lifting things, yeah. looking at the collection, and they're enjoying looking at it. It's an excited loss of sleep. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have um, some time for questions. I know um, we may have a quite few questions coming through online as well, but if, does anybody have any questions for Paul? About anything in particular? Everyone's so shy. I'm OK with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, we've got a couple of questions coming through on the Ask the Speaker section on the, the app. Um, so, Paul, what colours of patterns work well for retro vintage <laughs> looks with a shop for <laughs> floors and walls? Funny you should say that. I've just done a, a slightly retro scheme in one of my, one of my cushion collections, uh, the show home collection. So um, I do actually love mixing a lot of burnt orange in with like the putty pink. And um, I have teamed it up with a soft blue as well. Um, I suppose it depends on the individual because maybe what I would put as a 70s scheme might mm -hmm. scare a lot of people. So it depends on how, how, how far you want to go. Um, I think it's nice that you can use block colors on, on your paint and pick out those, those, those mm -hmm. color tones and then bring in more pattern on your furniture or your furnishings or your curtains. There's just so much fabric choices about at the moment. Yeah. And I think the retro styling we're seeing coming through. So um, for people who are here, you can see what I'm pointing to. But I've got some analog alarm clocks. And what you'll see there is the colors that Paul has just mentioned, the kind of the pinks, the browns, the blues, the real pops of color. There's definitely a resurgence in this kind of retro styling. Um, we're seeing a lot of that kind of coming through. And I think um, people are just, I think when you think of that, kind of 70s retro, it isn't just kind of the acids. Actually, a lot of the colour pops were just very simple yeah. um, and just very um, nostalgic, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, that's my two cents. But we are seeing more of a, a retro kind of 70s vibe coming through, not only in the interior side, but on a lot of the gift side as well for people who are exploring today. Yep. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have another one? No, still nope. shy. We've still got we've got one more Humphrey actually. Um, from your experience on the show, how did the designers feed off each other, and to what extent <laughs> did it influence your own style? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think they realised how how well we were all going to get on. Um, I think there was there was predicted friction between us, but um, yeah, there there wasn't too much friction. Um, well, nothing worth talking about. I think I learned something from every single one of them. You know. Um, I came on as the wallpaper guy, and I left with a crash course of upholstery, lighting, styling. You know, I learned a little bit of everything um, mm -hmm. on the show. So I, I think I can safely say that each one of them gave me a little bit of inspiration. Um, I did make really good friends with Siobhan, um, Interior Curve, and, and she's very maximalist, loves color, loves pattern. And, and I think she, she helped me be a bit more braver as well, whereas I always do like to be bolder, but then maybe shy away from it a little bit, where she was 
egging me on and saying, no, really, go for it. No, don't hold back. Go for go, it. Go, go, go home. Yeah, and I think some of them had the calming effect because on a Friday, which was classed as studio day, that's the day I would be most nervous because I honestly didn't want to be on Michelle Agundahan's sofa defending <laughs> myself or my design. Um, so there was a couple of them there that, were, that had the, the maternal ways and they were able to keep me, keep me um, very calm. So, but we did support each other. We were a real supportive bunch. And many weeks, if somebody wasn't finished, you'd probably mm -hmm. see me in the background. I was in hanging somebody's curtains or putting their floor down or I was putting wallpaper up. I was, if I was done, we'd help each other. So. That's quite nice because I think sometimes on, on shows like that they can manufacture maybe a little bit of drama that wasn't there or try and intimate that something was happening where it wasn't, where it sounds like it was completely collaborative. Well, collaborative to a point it's still a competition, but it was nice it had that kind of we're all in it together type of vibe. Yeah, they did, they did struggle with trying to um, make us give other designers a critique as designers. So they, they were quite um, interested in seeing our reactions when we went in to see each other's spaces. So we didn't get to do that until the very end when we were all done. And then the camera crew would be set up inside everybody's room to watch people's reactions. And then they would ask you questions and, do you really like this? What would you change? So there was being honest and then not wanting to look like a real yeah. horrible, judgy person. Because <laughs> obviously I wasn't there to be a judge, I was just there to try and get by week by week. Um, but they really wanted our critique, yeah. which I, I didn't give all the time because <laughs> it wasn't my position, I felt. You've been erring on the side of niceness. Yeah, yeah. yeah nobody wants to come across like a Simon Cowell. No, no, no. Were there any rooms that you walked into, and you don't have to name names, where you thought, actually, don't know about that? Yeah. There was quite a few rooms, <laughs> and there was, a uh, there was a few rooms and a few briefs, and I remember thinking, if I had this brief in this room, this would look incredible. To myself, <laughs> I said that, but there were so many um, memorable moments on the show <laughs> that I remember thinking, oh, that's, that's, that should not be allowed, but... And was there ever a room that you walked into and wish you'd done it? Yeah, there was. So, um, Lindsay was very, very talented. Uh, Lindsay won. Um, and deserved the win. Um, I remember on the first week, uh, I'd, I'd flew in from Northern Ireland and the lorry had collected all my stuff and it all arrived in Oxford at the show home and then over three days I had to get stuck in with the trades and create the, the show home. And I remember on the last day going down to see Lindsay's and she also had a lounge. I remember seeing that I had, de I felt like it was so, mine was so nice and then I went in and saw Lindsay's and I thought, oh, she's really, this is really, really high standard here. And she is an architect and she's a really good eye for design. But I think what I learned was it wasn't just about designing a space to look nice, but it was also about the feeling of it and the function. Mm -hmm. Lindsay felt, Lindsay, when she designed, she was always thinking about who was going to use the space. You know, did it, did it, was it a family? Was it a couple? Was there going to be for entertaining? Did it need an office? So she always thought very practical. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I picked up from her, um, that she was very good at zoning areas, or, yeah. you know, without blocking areas off. So I remember on the first week, I thought, there's no chance I'm gonna get any further when this is the competition I'm up against, but. But going into that, I mean, you mentioned obviously uh, Siobhan, who is a good friend now. Um, and also you've mentioned she gave you the confidence to just go big. Are you glad you did that now? Are you glad that you had somebody in your corner say, no, this is your crazy vision, you go full? Yeah, I, I, think, I think the producers knew um, because the casting process wasn't easy. There was six different um, additions to get through. I think when they seen my aesthetic, they clearly seen that there was a more is more look and that I wasn't going to be shy with colour. So I think whenever I designed the show home, I popped a little bit of subtle colour in there, but I was trying to appeal to mass markets mm. because what I wanted was somebody to come into that show home and say, oh, I could live here, I could move in with my furniture and it'll, it'll work. And then I think after that, they just kind of give me the go ahead to write, okay, go for it now. And I think then some of the weeks like the beach hut or the hair mm. salon when I was just really going for it, I think that's the weeks that I really thrived. And speaking to even people today, that's the weeks that a lot of people remember was the ones that I really threw myself at. And yeah. it was probably the ones I enjoyed the most. Well, I think all of us sitting in the room know that if you 
if you do something to the best of your ability and you stand behind it and think, oh my God, I just couldn't have done any better, it doesn't matter if you win or lose because yeah. you're really happy with what you've done. And it sounds like that's those weeks, that those memorable ones that we do still think back on, that's, that's the reason behind it. And even if you know, you'd have went out on one of those weeks, I doubt you'd have regretted the design. It was like, no, it's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, each, each, so when I look back through the portfolio, there's eight designs. And I think, oh, I got so much experience. Um, I learned so much. I gained a bit more confidence. And no, it, it just, I ticked so many boxes. And every single scheme was, there was a bit of me in it. And I, I look at it and think, oh, I didn't do too bad there. <laughs> no, you did quite well. <laughs> um, do we have any more questions? Oh, Cash. Thank you for being brave. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Two questions, if I may. First is, when, if ever, inspiration doesn't come, do you have any kind of tips for sparking creativity? Um, and the second question is, where do you get your shoes from? <laughs> I'll answer the second one first. Uh, they're, um, I bought them in Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> it's a very Vegas like, outfit. Uh, they're Steve Madden, <laughs> and I was going to see Celine Dion, and I seen them in the window. I thought, yeah, I'll have you. <laughs> so yeah, that yeah. So I wear them at special special occasions. <laughs> um, the first question you asked me about spark and creativity, and um, I kind of pick it up um, from from everywhere. I always photograph anything that I like and bank it. Um, even if it's not relevant to what I'm doing, and sometimes when I'm just flicking through my iPad or my phone, I just I come across something. I go, oh. That's completely random, but that's a color palette that I haven't explored yet. Um, another thing, I, I really do love fashion. Um, and I love seeing what's coming in in fashion. And then shortly after that, I always notice a bit like the 70s vibe that um, it always follows through in homeware. And um, I saw a, a trend come through for wider leg trousers and flares and those colors. And, and then it's follow through and homework. So, so it's about 12 months, yeah, 20 about a months, year. something hits the catwalk to come into full store, and then you'll see drips of it coming through home, maybe 18. Yeah, so I also find that I don't, I don't always look at the interior world for inspo. Sometimes I'll look at fashion and see what, what they're doing on the runways, what, what colors they're using, what patterns they're using, because I know that's a little bit of mm. how to get ahead of the game, because that's what's going to be coming through. Um, so yeah, and photograph everything. No, thank you. Got time for one more question, anybody? No? Okay, great. Well, Paul, thank you so much um, for coming to have a conversation with us. Um, if anybody wants to see Paul, um, he is on the Malimi stand at Autumn Fair. Um, and I'm sure as many people will, give him a follow on Instagram as well. There's some great content on there. Thanks, thank Paul. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.